Tom Petty was best known as the legendary frontman for the band Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Tom Petty straddled the divide separating classic rock and new wave, revitalizing and reinvigorating the big jangle of the birds and the garage rock roar of the Rolling Stones with his earliest records with the Heartbreakers in the late 1970s. Petty also enjoyed success as a solo artist with such hit songs as Free Fallen and Running Down a Dream. Petty was born in Gainesville, Florida on October the 20th, 1950, the first son of Earl and Kitty Petty. Though he was close to his mother and younger brother, Petty had a difficult relationship with his father, who was often physically and verbally abusive. But Petty found refuge in music, idolizing the likes of Elvis Presley and the Beatles and learning to play guitar. By high school, Petty's passion for music was all-consuming. He began playing bass with a local group called The Epics, and at the age of 17, he dropped out of school to perform with a new band that would become known as Mud Crutch, named after the farm where two of its members lived. Petty quickly emerged as the frontman and primary songwriter in the group, which soon developed a devoted local following. The year 1974 proved a pivotal one for Petty, who married his girlfriend Jane Benyo, with whom he already had a daughter, Adria, before moving to Los Angeles with Mudcrutch in the hopes of reaching a wider audience. There, Petty and Benyo had their second daughter, Anna Kim, and Mudcrutch signed to Shelter Records, but when their lone single went largely unnoticed, the group disbanded. However, the label recognized Petty's talent and offered him a solo contract. Within a few years, their confidence in him would be duly rewarded. After trying for a while to put together a new backing band, Petty eventually reconnected with his former Mudcrutch bandmates Mike Campbell on guitar and Ben Montench on keyboards who were playing with bassist Ron Blair and drummer Stan Lynch. Shortly thereafter, they restructured Petty's deal with Shelter, signed a contract as Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and set to work on a new record. Released in November 1976, their self-titled debut established the blueprint for success that would follow on much of their subsequent work, combining a hard-edged rock and roll foundation with the pop sensibilities of 1960s groups such as the Beatles and the Birds and featuring Petty's distinctive voice and gift for succinct storytelling. The album initially sold poorly until a subsequent tour of England with Nils Lofgren landed it on the British charts. Hoping to capitalize on their newly won overseas popularity, Shelter re-released the single Breakdown in the United States and it reached number 40 on the charts, giving the group their first taste of success. Incredibly, the single American Girl, one of their best known and best loved songs, failed to reach the American charts until it was also re-released nearly two decades later. Undeterred, the group returned to the studio to record their second album, 1978's You're Gonna Get It, which fared far better than its predecessor, reaching number 23 on the charts. However, their momentum was momentarily threatened when Shelter was bought by MCA and Petty's attempts to renegotiate their contract led to lengthy legal proceedings that left him bankrupt and bitter. Despite this acrimonious start with MCA, the group signed with its subsidiary Backstreet Records and began work on their next album, Damn the Torpedoes. Released in 1979, it rocketed to number two on the charts on its way to selling more than three million copies. Packed with quality songs, including singles Don't Do Me Like That and Refugee, which firmly established Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers as rock superstars. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. The album Hard Promises was released in 1981. It reached number five on the charts and went platinum with its lead track, The Waiting, giving the group its first number one single. That same year, Petty collaborated with Stevie Nicks on her album Belladonna, recording the hit single duet Stop Dragon My Heart Around. Back in the studio with the Heartbreakers, he continued his successful run with 1982's Long After Dark, which reached number nine on the charts, and the singles 
You Got Lucky and Deliver Me, hitting number 20 and number 21 respectively. Looking to take their music in a new direction, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers began working on their new album, Southern Accents, which reached number 7 on the charts. In 1986, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers embarked on a tour with Bob Dylan, performing both their own material and serving as Dylan's backup band, before returning to the studio to record Let Me Up, I've Had Enough. Petty's friendship with Dylan would lead to another successful collaboration when they joined George Harrison, Roy Orbison and Jeff Lynne to form the Travelling Wilburys, whose 1988 self-titled album reached number three on the charts, went triple platinum and won the Grammy for Best Rock Performance. In the wake of his success with the Travelling Wilburys, Petty began work on his first solo album, Full Moon Fever, which was produced by Lynn and included several of the Heartbreakers. Released in 1989, the album was a massive success, reaching number three on the charts and going multi-platinum. The album's top single, Free Fallen, reached number seven on the singles charts and remains among Tom Petty's best-known songs. Running Down a Dream and I Won't Back Down also perform well. In 1990, the Travelling Wilburys released their follow-up album, Volume 3, and in 1991, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers put out the platinum selling Into the Great Wide Open, which featured the top 40 offering, Learning to Fly. Around this time, Petty also revealed that he had secretly brokered a deal with Warner Brothers years earlier and that he would be leaving MCA, bringing an end to years of conflict between him and the label. They would go out with a bang, however, releasing a Greatest Hits album in 1993, which featured the single Mary Jane's Last Dance. The album would remain on the Billboard charts for more than six years. For his first Warner Brothers offering, Petty teamed up with producer Rick Rubin to produce his second solo album, Wildflowers, in 1994, which nearly equaled the achievements of Full Moon Fever. Among its notable tracks are the singles You Don't Know How It Feels, You Wreck Me, and It's Good To Be King. Two years later, he reunited with the Heartbreakers to record the gold record soundtrack for the film She's The One, and also to play backup for Johnny Cash on his album Unchained. Also in 1996, Petty and his wife Jane divorced after 22 years of marriage, beginning a difficult period for Petty in which he developed a heroin addiction. Personal struggles aside, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers kept grinding away, playing 20 sellout nights at the Fillmore in San Francisco in 1997, before returning to the studio with Ruben to produce the top 10 album Echo in 1999. At the start of the new millennium, Petty got his personal life in order, kicking his heroin addiction and marrying Dana York, whom he had met a decade earlier. In 2002, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers released their 11th album, The Last DJ, on which Petty aired his ongoing grievances about the record industry. Whatever he thought of it, however, the music industry loved him back. And later that year, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2006, Petty went solo once more, working with Lynn to produce the number four charting album, Highway Companion, before reuniting with the Heartbreakers for a 30th anniversary tour. The following year, the group was the focus of a four-hour documentary titled Running Down a Dream, and in 2008, they performed during the halftime show of the Super Bowl. That same year, Petty returned to his roots by reforming Mudcrutch to record their self-titled debut album more than 30 years after its original inception. He returned with the Heartbreakers in 2010 for the live studio album Mojo, followed by several years of touring before the band knocked out their 13th album, 2014's Hypnotic Eye. Amazingly, it was their first album ever to reach number one on the charts. In September 2017, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers wrapped up a leg of their 40th anniversary tour with the performance at the Hollywood Bowl. A week later, Petty suffered a cardiac arrest in his Malibu home and was rushed to UCLA Santa Monica Hospital. He died on October the 2nd, 2017, at the age of 66. 
Petty's longtime manager, Tony Dimitriades, released a statement on behalf of the family and band and said, On behalf of the Tom Petty family, we are devastated to announce the untimely death of our father, husband, brother, leader and friend, Tom Petty. He suffered cardiac arrest at his home in Malibu in the early hours of this morning and was taken to UCLA Medical Center but could not be revived. He died peacefully at 8.40 p.m., surrounded by his family, bandmates and friends. On January the 19th, 2018, the Los Angeles County Coroner announced that Petty had died from a multi-system organ failure caused by a lethal combination of drugs found in his system, including the painkillers fentanyl and oxycodone and the sedative to mazepam. His family followed with a statement on Petty's website noting that they were aware that the musician had been taking medications in order to continue playing live while suffering from a range of ailments that included emphysema, knee problems and a fractured hip. Despite this painful injury, he insisted on keeping his commitments to his fans and he toured for 53 dates with a fractured hip and as he did, it worsened to a more serious injury, the statement read. On a positive note, we now know for certain he went painlessly and beautifully exhausted after doing what he loved the most for one last time, performing live with his unmatchable rock band for his loyal fans on the biggest tour of his 40 plus year career. He was extremely proud of that achievement in the days before he passed. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Tom Petty song or a moment in his career that you keep going back to? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.